Miss, which contains suede glands. We'll look at the picture of this later on in a little while. Okay. So, sweat travels through the sweat duct, evaporates to regulate the internal body temperature. The blood vessels, the nerve endings, they make us aware of pain, pleasure, and temperature on the skin. So, you can see the skin is a layer of fat known as the adipose tissue acts as an insulation under the skin. It helps to, 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 to keep you warm. Uh, it, it, it absorbs heat and uh, also acts as uh, a supply of uh, energy when you lack uh, glucose. So that is it about the skin. We'll look at the picture of a skin probably later on. Now let us discuss thermal regulation by the skin. What is thermal regulation? Thermal regulation is simply maintaining a constant temperature environment, constant temp uh, constant body temperature. When your body overheats, for example, uh, you 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 were running or there's just uh, you're in a hot environment, hot weather and things like that. What happens to your body? What, what what are the things that your body has to do to help you uh, you cool down or to maintain a constant body temperature? That is thermal regula regulation by the skin. Hair on your skin will basically lie flat. They'll kind of fall down. They won't stand erect. They'll fall down. The erector muscles are going to relax. The erector muscles relax and the sweat glands are going to secrete sweat so that sweat comes on top of your skin, cools down the body uh, as it evaporates or as it goes uh, into the atmosphere. So that is about uh, the thermal regulation of the skin when your body overheats. So let us uh, talk about... Um, Another thermal regulation or regulatory technique that is the vasodilation. Vasodilation, if the body temperature rises a lot, the arteries inside you, the arterial supplying sweat glands are going to dilate or increase in size meaning they'll bring more blood to, so that the gland can make more sweat. Okay, so blood temperature rises. So that you're supplying sweat glands are going to increase in size, meaning the arteries su supplying uh, the sweat glands, they'll increase in size, more blood, uh, so that more sweat can be formed by the sweat glands. And the arteries supplying the capillary is are going to dilate which simply means increasing size bringing more blood to the capillaries brought to the surface capillaries where it can lose heat and basically cooling down the body so if you observed uh especially uh, in maine where you have your the, the veins coming on top of the body if if you're you are, you are overheating and you see your veins enlarging or getting bigger are increasing in size because there's more blood being brought to the surface so that it can lose heat that is what we call vasodilation your body overcools now we talked about uh, when the body overheats now it's overcooled the muscles are going to work uh, they'll start shivering okay uh, you'll notice that when you your body is uh, cold or is overcooled, you start shivering. Okay, so that shivering is not just uh, a, a a design thing that happens by chance. It's it's designed to help to generate uh, heat by the, uh, the the quick action of the muscles. Metabolism may increase, so that helps generate heat in your body, so that uh, your body starts heating up. And the hair, they're going to stand up on your skin. Hair are going to stand up and in human erector muscles uh, leads to goosebumps. 
In here, the animal's thick layer of hair acts as an insulator, for example, like dogs. Uh, the thick hair acts as insulators, meaning they really don't, they trap the heat and they, they don't uh, lose heat because those, those thick hairs are going to trap the, the, the body heat within them. So that is the what happens when the body overcools out the muscles are going to work you start shivering producing more heat hair is going to stand up uh, the erector muscles will lead to goosebumps now let's go ahead and talk about the final vasoconstriction so vasoconstriction is kind of the opposite to vasodilation so vasoconstriction helps when the temperature falls vasodilation helps when the temperature increases or rises so when the temperature falls vasoconstriction helps by the arterials and the capillaries in the skin they constrict meaning they reduce in size you've got uh, a shorter supply of blood flowing through them this will help so that they don't lose much heat they maintain the heat you remember when you have more blood flowing in the capillaries uh, you've got uh, more heat being lost so by reducing the size of the capillaries or the arterials you have less blood flowing in and less heat going out so that is vasoconstriction which is reducing in size of the capillaries and the arterials All right, so now let's talk about the skin. Just uh, lead to uh, zooming into what the skin and the parts of the skin, how they're important for homeostasis. Or coming, having a little bit difficult in pronouncing the word there. Okay, homeostasis. Okay, of the skin. Okay, homeostasis. So this is the skin as we're about to see here, and. Uh, the top part is what we call the epidermis or having the cornified layer which is a layer made of flat dead cells uh, and the epidermis contains uh, melanin uh, it's part which also contains melanin here this is the epidermis and the epidermis we have um uh, the pores okay so this is the pore of sweat that is the, the the small openings you can see on top of your skin those are called pores okay the pores of sweat gland and uh, talking about the glands or the sweat glands now let's talk about the hair first of all we have the hair this is called the hair shaft this, this is the hair on top of your skin you're able to see the hair Fo follicles called the hair follicle from here you can see this is the hair follicle so the hair follicle is surrounded by what we call a sebaceous gland this gland here you're able to see it's a sebaceous gland it secretes an oily substance called the sebum okay which keeps your skin soft and supple okay this is the sebaceous gland and we have the hair erector muscles attached to the epidermis and attached to the hair the, the hair uh, follicle which helps in uh, erecting the hair as well as helping the hair to fall down okay so when and uh, what else do we have we have the capillaries here we supply the glands with blood okay uh, the, the the sweat glands here and down here we've got the fat layer so this is called the epidermis and this part is called the dermis so the hair here let's talk about this hair shaft uh, under thermal uh, regulation of the skin so when when the body overheats the the, the hair uh, lies flat on the the skin it goes flat and the erector muscles relax okay the the kind of uh, they won't contract they will relax so that this can fall down like the way it is so you see the hair on your skin falling down and uh, under vasodilation we see that the capillaries which is these ones here supplying uh, 
they will increase uh, in size meaning you have more blood coming here to uh, uh, to the to the to the glands so more blood to the surface where you, uh, it can lose a heat and that is when the body overheats and when the body overcools uh, you have hair standing up so that it traps the heat and the rectal muscles uh, will lead to um, ghost bumps on the skin they'll, they'll, they'll contract so that is about the skin and how it does several of uh, the processes in the body when it comes to homeostasis so the capillaries the sweat glands the hair follicle uh, the hair shafts the pores all of these are very much important in uh, helping the process of homeostasis